Are you ready? Live from the Metal Mayhem Studios in Rochester, New York. We are gold. We are gold. And heard around the world by metalheads just like you. This is Metal Mayhem ROC. Heavy metal music. Your weekly dose of metal music. Interviews, album reviews, news, and more. Want to be part of the show? Send us a message through our website, MetalMayhemROC.com, or hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Search Metal Mayhem ROC. A proud member of the Pantheon podcast team. It's getting nice and heavy. And now, welcome to tonight's host, John the Vernomatic Verno. Tonight's show, we have a fun one. We're going down to Southern Kale Surf down in South Florida, Melbourne area, and we have a new friend of the show. Her name's Brittany Chapman. She's a 37-year-old metalhead, and she's got <laughs> heavy metal roots in the family. She's the daughter of the late, great Paul Chapman of UFO fame, Wasted, and several other acts. Brittany, welcome to Metal Mayhem ROC. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. This is great. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, like to, you know, reintroduce you to your buddy, uh, Southern Cal. Hey. It's great seeing How you, you? On the show the other night. Quiet, right? Yeah, it was fun. That was fun. Fun show. Fun show. Yeah, it was a good time. They they were awesome. Yes, ma'am. They fucking rocked. Yeah, they were so good. <laughs> so this is a fun little icebreaker. Um you know, Southern Cal, he's our South Florida correspondent. He told me he was going to the Quiet Riot show. And, you know, he's been seeing a lot of shows lately. And, uh, guys, when was that show? Saturday night? This past Saturday? Saturday. Yeah, so I'm hanging out, watching a little YouTube, just uh, relaxing, and Cal sending me pictures. And he sends me this picture of uh, these two really good-looking girls. One's the Cal's wife, and the other one was Brittany. And the caption said, Here's Heidi with Brittany Chapman, Paul Chapman's daughter. I'm like, what? You know, how <laughs> it's flying under the radar. So as it turns out, Paul retired in his later years to South Florida. He was living there. Southern Cal has his uh, restaurant and he's been living down there over 30 years. And I guess Heidi and uh, Brittany are uh, BFFs. So <laughs> you know what? What we're going to do tonight, Brittany, is um, we're going to talk about your relationship with your father, you growing up Chapman, that's what we're billing it as <laughs> the stories of growing up with your father, but more importantly, the outreach of, of the rock and roll community that, that played with your father for well over 40 plus years. It's truly amazing. So once again, condolences on the passing of your father. And, you know, I've lost my dad, Southern Cal lost his father. So but it's always cool to, you know, revisit, if you will, just a little bit. So I'm going to let uh, Kale take over and uh, navigate this, and we're going to have some fun with it. So, John, go ahead. Well, again, Brittany, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you. Like we said, uh, we ran into each other at the Quiet Riot show. Um, I was blown away at the way you talked about your father. Um, passion and love it was um it was really like I, I told you this is why i wanted to request the interview with you and sit down and talk to you about things and um not only to get to know um as our fans would like to know um, more about paul from the ufo but growing up chapman uh you know two different views um i would view paul as a rock and roll star and ufo where you didn't really know that you said until after he had uh passed away that you didn't realize how famous he was so your eyes were just it's the daughter looking at the father you know this is my dad this isn't Paul the shredder you know this yeah. is Paul the dad who's taken me to Meg O'Malley's or over to Frankie's or you know wherever you know Disney World this is yeah. the Paul the dad so this is what we're uh going to try to get to in this first half of the show um talk to us about how you didn't really realize how famous your father was until after his passing. What, um, brought, what uh, brought all that about? So, I mean, growing up, you it was the normalcy to me and the complete abnormalcy to everybody else of my childhood. was It's, it's mind-boggling because it was like, oh, that's not normal, um, having a rock star dad. But you didn't see him as a rock star. And he was very... Um, he was a family man. 
he, if he could have had 20 kids, he would have, (laughs) but he, you know, he was a big family man. He loved to gather people. He was constantly hosting parties at the house on the weekends. Um, There was people in and out of the house and a lot of them were famous people that I didn't know were famous people because they're just people, you know, and you don't see the, the icons that you see on stage as just people, but You know, so these people are just, you know, when Pete Way spent two weeks at the house, it was just like, oh, it's crazy Uncle Pete. (laughs) (laughs) You know, a lot of of uncles in the family. Well, I mean, it's just it was it was it it was wild. But after like, I mean, I started to know when when he started when the Internet really started to peak, like MySpace times, when everybody started getting on the MySpace pages, um, he started a fan page. And that's where he was really active with his fans. And I would go on there and like read some of his stories and stuff, but it still didn't click. Like, and then, you know, I think the biggest one was when um, the whole Ozzy tour came up. I believe it was the Diary of a Madman tour. And he had a big poster in the house. And once you start to realize the Osbournes came out with the reality show on TV. So then it's like, oh, well, my dad played with him, you know, and then it was it was like, a, oh, OK, that's cool. But then after he passed and the people that reached out to me, it was like, what? Um, what? You know, you're 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 finding a way to contact me to send condolences of your friend to, you, you know what I mean? Like, but I'm looking at this person as like, you know, when I got the the text message from Phil Campbell of Motorhead, my mouth dropped. Okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> ah, <laughs> I was like, Oh my gosh, it's real, you know? And, 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 and he was so sweet and, and uh, talking to, you know, Phil Con- and all of these people. And then, and then the, the people that reached out from all over the world, like people in Japan, people in, China people in, well, not really China, but like Japan was one of his favorite places to tour. Um, And so like people reaching out, I had to get translators. I was on the phone with people in different countries. Like I had to have a planner to where I could coordinate because of the time differences. It was extremely chaotic, but it helped me grieve a lot more hearing these stories of, you know, and every single person that I talked to, every single one, he was a, a great man. He was a loyal friend to everybody. He was a bright energy. He was a, a beautiful being of light, if you will. You know, let me, he, he let me was stick this in there real quick. The, you mentioned him um, liking to have the parties on the weekends and the dinner parties. Well, I talked to our mutual friend, Nicole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and she told me her first uh, meeting of your father was at one of these dinners mm-hmm. and how he would like to always announce that dinner will be ready at six. And Nicole said, I don't think that ever happened once. It was usually like 10 or 11. And mm-hmm. then in her uh, best English accent, she said, uh, when your father said, you're so small, you could fit right under my armpit. And he put an arm around her and sure enough, and, uh, <laughs> you know, again, and- just here's, here's Paul, the dad, not the part, not the rock star. Paul, the dad, just being a, his a friend to his daughter's friend, and just the low, just the regular guy that he was. That everybody, yeah. is. you know, he just happened to play guitar for UFO. So it was a nice little thing, story from Nicole. That and I, I can see that that whole scene because um, Nicole face when he stuck his head, her head in his armpit. She was like, oh, because he would he had been cooking all night so he always wore tank tops and he would be sweating but we had amps in the kitchen we had guitar amps in the dining room we had a drum kit in the dining room at one time so in between his cooking he would perform oh, and <laughs> what a dinner we're party. just like we're just like can you hurry up we're starving <laughs> like, and then that's how it was almost every weekend, every weekend was a party. So as we started to get older and our friends were able to drive, like we would all drive to my dad's house and sit there and watch him play and cook. And it was some of the best experiences of a lot of people's memories with him. Um, And then learning after his passing, like he was the the cook on the road. He loved to cook for everybody when they were on the road. And Mm -hmm. there was a time where they didn't have any money. And um, I believe it was Andy Parker told me the story of when he stole a bunch of food (laughs) from uh, uh, a grocery store 
and a bottle of scotch. So they had a crock pot on the road and he just grabbed a bunch of stuff he could throw in the crock pot and a bottle of scotch and they were fine. But um, he was, he wanted to take care of people. He was a very nurturing, he had a very nurturing spirit of taking care of everybody, but also having that main character energy of, well, I can make a great curry. That was his famous dish. And I can also rip on the guitar while I'm stirring the curry. And that's what he did. And that was normal for me. <laughs> it was normal for everybody. You know, uh, that's, Brittany, that's it. you mentioned, um, you just said that he is very nurturing. That leads mm-hmm. me to my next question. You, uh, your mother was married to Paul and correct me if I'm wrong. Paul had four marriages. And yeah. So now this is like the, the Brady Bunch on uh, on you know speed so, high speed yeah tell us a little bit about um the well your mother and your your family chapter but the the other the other mothers the other so, uh, yeah family whoa how is all that so it was wonderful um I just have to give a shout out to my mom who's the the real goat of the whole family because having to deal her breaking point with my dad was waking up getting the kids ready for school and all the roadies from poison were passed out drunk on the floor and she was like I can't do this anymore (laughs) I can't I got kids to get ready for school you've got your friends over her that are passed out on the floor like you know but my parents stayed very very close for the sake of the kids and so she had a relationship with every wife after the the next two wives so um wife number three her name was terry and um they were together for about 12 13 years and she was great she was a a great they they owned a guitar shop together um he was doing um guitar lessons in a studio downtown melbourne and um so she would do guitar repairs and he would do lessons and so they you know I actually don't even really know what happened during that whole situation. I just remember it being like, okay, we're done. (laughs) It was very odd. But then he remarried uh, Debbie and Debbie was, they were together for 18 years and Debbie was a, um, a flute player. She played the flute. She could play the cello. Um, She was, she could read music. She was very musical. Um, She's super smart. She was great. She was a great, stepmother to me as well. I, I've been very blessed with the wives that my dad has chosen because everybody got along and there was no ever, no animosity, no drama. You know, even if it was split holidays, my mom would spend the holidays with us and the, you know, and it was, it was a very loving family. We were all one big family. What about siblings? Did each man um, produce, um, you know, Chapman, so, uh, Chapman kids? Uh, no, just my mom. <laughs> and he had one previously before. So he has a son um, named Tice. Tice lives in the UK. Um, and my mom has a son, Bobby, who I was telling you about. Tice and Bobby are my older brothers, obviously my half brothers. And then my parents had my brother, Sean and I together. But then Terry had a son and Debbie has a daughter. So the, I, I had step siblings constant. It, I like having a lot of siblings meant the house was never calm. <laughs> the Brady Bunch, definitely. Yeah. It was. It was extremely chaotic, but it was normal. It, chaos was so normal, which is wild because like I talk to people and I tell them things and they're like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> did, did your siblings and step siblings did they have their own unique relationship with their fathers as, you know, looking up to your father as the rock star, if you will, or did, were they just disenchanted with that? Um, Cause you know, you're a rocker and, but maybe they weren't into it. Um, oh, they were, they all were. Uh, my brother Tice is a drummer. Uh, my brother, Bobby plays bass. Uh, my brother, Sean and I never really got into playing anything. I, I like not like we spoke. I like to know about music knowledge. Um, I guess that's from all the storytelling (laughs) in my life. Um, But they they've been musically inclined with, you know, different. They Bobby likes to play everything. And he's a I couldn't pick what music I liked until I was older because they were it was constant metal in the house between, you know, 
one brother is jamming anthrax in one room. One's going through the grunge stage in the other room. And, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, ah. you were doing the uh, Y2K, weren't you? <laughs> I don't even know. I couldn't, I was, I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to like anything. Like I, I couldn't listen to the music. They'd come in and turn it off. I remember I got a, a Sheena Easton CD and uh, that was the, that I was allowed to play that. <laughs> My brothers were kind of ruthless when it came to me putting music on. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome that there was such a, like four marriages and your mm -hmm. father, and it's a testament to his soul that mm -hmm. these are just relationships. And isn't that what life is? He It's like what you're saying. It was just moving on. He wasn't ending relationships. He was just adding to the Chapman legacy, if you will. So I keep loved going. it. So that's awesome. So yeah, I was very fortunate with that because like every people that I talk to that come from divorced families don't ever get yeah. blessed with anything like that, you know? So everybody, uh, Debbie did pass away a year before my dad did. And that was really, really hard, um, to see him go through a heartbreak like that. Um, because you, see him as a, a superior, as a superhero, as a, you know, and when you see somebody so vulnerable and broken, you know, it killed me to see because there was no way I could help heal him at all. You mm -hmm. know, so that was that was a little that was a rough patch. But um, getting to know him as Tonka has been amazing. It really has. Like, it's a Tonka it, it, truck, right? Is that how the that game started? Um, so I've heard three stories. <laughs> and there's so many times where I, I just am like, oh, I wish I, I I wish I could call him and ask him because now I'm hearing things. A lot of people are restricting on what they tell me too, because he was wild. He was very he was big into the drugs and booze. I mean, all of UFO was from what I've heard, they were crazy rock and roll, like partiers. So he was one of the hardest ones that he was indestructible and they called him Tonka. But um, I did, you know, I heard some one person gave him the name, I heard somebody else gave him the name. So I don't know exactly. But um, it's stuck. Yeah, getting. Way. Yeah, and, and, and very um, fitting either way. Fitting. The, right. The yeah, I he did um in 2015. So when I was born, it was when he was with wasted. And they did a tour after I was born and then they were he he moved to Florida. So I never got to experience at older wise like him being gone or him he was always there, you know, but my brothers got to, you know, when he was on tour with UFO or doing this, they got to have that whole experience of getting to go backstage at Judas Priest, getting to go backstage at Motley Crue, getting, cause that was where they, he was at the peak touring with them. And then, you know, sometimes when he's telling my brothers, tell me stories, I'm like, I didn't get any of that, but you know, <laughs> I got the, the best part. I got him fully focused on family care as opposed to being gone touring, working basically, you know, but my brothers got to experience a lot of cool things um, when they were younger with different rock stars. And I, I would get like a little envious, but then I'm like, nope, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got the, the relaxed Tonka. <laughs> well, you were born in 1986. So you, <laughs> you're a late to the party. You were, I was really late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? And, and honestly, and when did pops join UFO 80, 81, well, well, he played with them earlier, but he started recording. 78 to 83. Yeah. But. um, Yeah. And that's another thing, too. We were talking about, you know, he didn't play a lot of UFO at, at home growing up. You know, a lot of his. Um, I actually found a list I could I got to find somewhere. But of his top 12 most influential albums. Oh, that, man, that would be a great list. Yeah, I'll find that for you. Um, but you know, Beatles, Pink Floyd, The Who. Um, and then I was telling him Man. Man was like his favorite. And, you know, depending on the nights, like he'd get up in the middle of dinner and just start doing licks on the guitar because something like popped in his head. And then he'd put on the Welsh men's choir and be like, everybody listen to how beautiful this song is. And I'm like, 
the spaghetti's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, a, it's a great appreciation for music. Um, you know, the same way that people in Iron Maiden and Angel Witch and Def Leppard all looked at your father. Uh, you oh, told yeah. a story about going backstage and Kurt Hammett um, being in awe of your father. And you, in turn, are sitting there looking at Kurt <laughs> Hammett being in uh, enthralled with Kurt Hammett, you know, it's the, the big yeah. show there. So he's like, Oh, that's my daughter. And I was like, that's Kurt. Hammett. Right? Kurt's like, this is your dad. And I'm like, yeah, but you're you, you know, and it, it, it and Brit, I, Brittany, I, I, uh, quickly I retell that story. You told it to me last night and you, you said it, uh, it was really a cool story. Quickly uh, re say that. So, so it was um, Metallica and Godsmack and it was in um, South Florida, I believe in West Palm. And we got backstage and there was a security guard with a barricade and he was only letting one person at a time go. And so my dad was like, you know, you guys stay here. I'll be right back and see what's going on. And so he starts going. And I was like, no, 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 no. He is not going to have, you know, because I, I grew up listening to Metallica because of my brothers. So I was like, he is not going to have this moment. So I walked past the security guard and uh, opened the door and Kirk was, shaking his hand and it was one of those like handshakes like this but then like an, a double hand like oh my gosh paul uh, chapman ufo and i was like oh my gosh and my dad's like oh that's my daughter you know and kirk's dripping in sweat and he just got he, I, he just got off stage like he is soaked and i I'm, I'm going in for the hug and he's like i'm sweating i'm like i don't care you're kirk hammett and you know this idol and you're you know it was yeah. it was crazy it was it was it's so he was so sweet he was so nice and he kept saying you know this guy right here this guy right here he's the best and kept doing the thumbs up and looking at him and i was just like even that didn't click yeah, <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> like your father his heroes like you said pink floyd the stones the beatles because he was a kid when they were young and you know in their prime and Kirk, yeah. Hammett, he was the same way looking up to your dad, where young right. kids now look up to the Metallicas. It's uh, it just that that's one constant that always happens. The other yeah. thing, when we were talking, you, you mentioned something about how, um, well, I think we both agreed that once your father passes, it's been the outpour of the rock community that's been reaching out to you. Let's let's touch on some of that. Some of these people that have reached out to you where you're like, well, wait a second. Wait a second. Joe Elliott, a Def Leppard. I didn't even know my dad knew Joe Elliott, a Def Leppard. And here he is, you know, calling you to send his condolences. What was well, that? Like? The, that was so the whole the, the, the Joe Elliott. I knew that I met Def Leppard when I was 15 with them, but it would my dad brought 15 people. It wasn't like you can bring like your family. My dad brought 15 people backstage at Death Leopard. So it was very quick, very fast. Um, my dad and Steve were actually really good friends. Steve Clark that passed away and Phil. Phil and him were, were buds because girl toured with UFO. Um, but my brother actually trashed their room when he was two. They were at a, uh, a Death Leopard concert in like 1987 or 80, it was before I was born, or it was like right after I was born. And they left him in the dressing room while they went and watched the show, a toddler. Okay. That's the, <laughs> that's the rock and roll lifestyle. That, you know? that, that's rock and, and roll. He, that's yeah. Rock and, and, and they came back and he trashed the room. And I mean, what else would a toddler do? So lucky he didn't get drunk. <laughs> and so when we went, when we were, you know, 15, 16 years old, they, they remembered him. They're like, we, you little shit. Like you were the kid that, that destroyed the room and we were laughing about it. Still, it didn't click. Like it did not click. And then after, you know, the thing with the Joe Elliott situation was he was a fan of my dad before he was in UFO. He was a fan of my dad when he was in Lone Star which was a band he was in, in like 1976, 75. I can't remember. There's been so many, um, but he used to hitchhike to go see my dad play. <laughs> I was like, really? What? Yeah. There was like all of these stories that come out. And like you said, the outpouring of people I've, I, I've talked to, you know, the Def Leppard guys, all the guys from UFO have been really, really sweet. Um, all of the 
everybody, everybody in the music community that loved him and adored him uh, have just been great keeping his legacy alive for me. You, well, you have, um, go ahead, John. Okay. Well, you have uh, talked about um, this, the outpouring and, and, the, and the people, you know, we um, are very familiar with uh, Billy Sheehan up here in Rochester or up where Verno is up in Rochester, New York. Um, mm -hmm. he me, uh, and he showed me a picture, as a matter of fact, well, he looked like 10 years old. I don't know. He, he <laughs> yeah, he was old, young. Just a little kid. Yeah. Um, talk about Billy a little bit. Billy us. was Billy was amazing. He was super, super nice and very generous um, taking the time because there was a, a lot of people in line waiting to talk to him um, and sharing his stories with me. Um, your dad was a great guy. He was full of love. I mean, just... Everybody says the same thing. He was just such a good man to to people. He was such he was a good people person, um, and they bonded very well together. They kept in touch um, over the years, and thankful for social media, they were able to still keep in touch. Um, and he just he was just awesome. And he told me the story about how my dad was too cheap to buy new pants, so he would duct tape over the groin yeah. area. I had before a show every night and he said, then they all gather around to watch him take it off because it would be stuck to his junk basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, Billy was a really nice guy. And, and like, just when I told him, I sent him a picture of me and Rudy and I was like, got to meet Rudy. And he's like, um, nice guy, good friend of mine. Um, he just, He's always, you know, he'll check in and say, Hey, how's it going? Or I followed his whole tour right now with Mr. Big and, um, they were in like Japan yeah. and he was uh, posting all of these. He was very active on Facebook. Um, so I was, you know, telling him like watching these sold out shows. <laughs> like I, it, it makes me miss my dad because there was a lot of projects in the works that he had going on that could have brought him out to do other things. Um, just, you know. Well, when he joined UFO, it was the, the prime time, you know, it was uh, like Biff Byford from Saxon said, where were you in 79 when the dam began to burst? Because that whole new wave of British heavy metal, it it was it's kind of like the way Heidi was, my wife, uh, when the grunge started. She was there in the beginning. But for us, me and the Vernomatic, we were there for the beginning of something that just was special at the time. Um, your father was in UFO the the best years i think of that band um at the time you had phil mogg pete way uh paul raymond who actually uh mm -hmm. ended up leaving for one of the albums they played as a four piece and then the other long timer andy parker who you mentioned earlier uh these guys were just a, a great band perfect timing for them like you said your father uh, replaced michael shanker at the time who had just left the band and uh you know, those are some big shoes to fill. He's a, a good X-Men on his own and, uh, you know, still doing it to this day. So uh, I, I loved the the four albums he was on. My first uh, experience with the UFO album was the Mechanics album, your your father's mm -hmm. third album that he had performed with UFO. And just great stuff on there. Classic British new wave of heavy metal stuff on yeah. there. So no wonder he, he loved... knew all these people, Iron Maiden and, and oh, yeah. like that. They, they were all at they were all there at that same time. I would have loved to have been a 14-year-old kid over in, you know, South London or whatever, just anywhere over there catching gigs at the Hammersmith and watching. That was my brother. In that was my brother, movie. yeah. So he got to do all of that stuff. And I'm like, you know, but the thing is too, is like I'm looking through all of his pictures. My dad was huge on taking photographs and videos. I mean, there was a camera all the time and the disposable ones. So he would do triple or quadruple copies every time. So now I have all of these pictures. And what's crazy is I I, I see a picture of Andy Parker making a face like, eh. and I text it to him and I go, you want to tell me what's wrong here? And, and he'll come up with this. And he'll tell me the whole story behind the picture. And I'm like, wow okay you know and i i see i told um i told him last night that you know i have a picture of phil collin and having sunday dinner with my grandparents 
<laughs> you know, and I, I, I get a to photo book I, that would be to look through yeah. that. Oh yeah. And so like, I, I mean, even though my brothers got to experience all that cool stuff as a kid, like I'm completely reaping the benefits of being his kid. Now meeting these people, hearing the stories, um, you know, learning who he was as a person instead of a dad, like, you know, a superhero rock star dad to me. And he I loved the beach. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask you earlier, what made him move, want to move to this um, area, Melbourne, Florida? Um, so they were the the tour with ACDC that they did. One of the roadies from ACDC had a place in Satellite Beach. So uh, he convinced my dad to come here. And that's where my it was like an apartment complex. Um, so my mom was living there. And that's how my parents met. <laughs> right. So and my mom's from new hampshire like boston new hampshire all up north area there so for her to and him to be at the same place at the same time you know and just she fell in, she she's like he was like my john lennon he had the accent he played guitar she didn't know who ufo was either mm -hmm. you know they had done i think it was ufo cheap trick and eight was it acdc i i can't i cannot recall mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm fuzzy with all. I, I mean, I have been, I, I should start writing things down a lot more. <laughs> well, all those, that's, all those bands toured together. They were. Yes. Uh, Brittany, I wanted to just circle back a little bit about the UFO days. Cause even though uh, your father, Paul started recording with them in 1881, it was all the way back in the mid seventies where Honestly, he would fill in. He played with the band on tour. He replaced Michael Schenker on one of those Rush tours. And it, he, mm -hmm. wasn't did, he wasn't a recording member yet. Did, was, did you ever get privy to any conversation about, and I hate to put it this way, but the mid to late 70s UFO drama and how um, he, he was almost treated as a pawn in all that? A bit. Um, I agree with that. I uh, there was times where he would talk about, you know, certain situations where he felt a little alone in the band. Um, there was no the camaraderie of the band because everybody already had a bond and like, you know, so but he loved to play and he loved he he knew that they would have a big following. And like I said, I I think you know, he had that main character energy to where, you know, yeah, him and Michael are not the same. And like we discussed, I fight with people all the time on the internet about it. He wasn't the same and they were big shoes to fill, but my dad had a very bluesy style of playing and very, I don't want to say careless, not careless, but he was very more free with it as opposed to being by the book, note for note, lick for lick. He kind of went off with it. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen him just go and and play and just go to another place in his mind. And it's just like, I'm sitting there watching his hands like, hello, <laughs> are you okay? Yeah. Michael Shanker <laughs> says, and he tells everybody this, that he doesn't like to listen to anybody so that he would never be influenced by anybody but himself. Now, when I listen to your father play, that stuff's coming from the heart. You can tell it's 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 coming from the heart and soul. His music, his soloing, his techniquing. Uh, it's it's one of a kind for sure. His own style. Oh yeah, and his his favorite thing to do was gift you music. Like I have songs that he's written for me that I, I they're the best. I he wrote me a song for my sixth birthday and slow danced with me in the in the kitchen to it and never forgot it because he had to hold me because my arms are like wrapped around his head and he had to hold me and um when I got married we danced to it at my wedding um and then uh he did a couple of covers as well Beatle covers um he just he loved to gift here's you know Christmas I would have CDs of stuff that he would mix and do in my stocking <laughs> you know here's like and and stuff that I like liked like we loved the Beatles the Beatles he would play guitar and I would sing and he would record it. So I have all of these cassettes of us singing together wow. that he saved. And it's, it's awesome. And, and he's, you know, I have to be loud because the chaos in the house, I was the loudest kid. And, um, 
you know, so he's calling, we'd be singing. He's like, stop shouting, you know, and he'd keep playing, stop shouting. Cause I'm like yelling into the microphone. He had everything. He had a whole studio set up. He built me a stage one time in the garage to, to perform on. Um, you know, he was just very big into, you know, this is for you. This is for you. Give, 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 give. And then take, 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 take too. Anytime, you know, someone would offer him something like when, you know, do you want to play here? Do you want to do this? Do you want to join this? Take it up. He would take it all in. And I loved watching him play. He did a, he did a stunt, a stunt. I'm sorry. He did. He played for Gator Country, um, which were the Molly Hatchet guys. Molly Hatchet, yeah. <laughs> which was a whole okay, so this is what we're doing now type thing because it was Southern rock. It wasn't How'd like- that come about? Because they're Gainesville, <laughs> uh, they're Northern. Jacksonville area, yeah. yeah. Jacksonville. Yeah, so- um, West side, Jacksonville. I, yeah. I, can't, <laughs> I can't exactly remember. I know he was friends with, um, what was his name that passed away? The guitar player. Dave LeBeck or Dwayne Holland. Dwayne Holland. Yep. They were buds. And he That's took awesome. over for Dwayne for a couple of, they know they did a tour. And um, that was crazy too, because he hosted them at the house all the time. So we went from huh. British rock stars to Southern bumpkins. <laughs> yeah, swamp rock. That's what they call it. <laughs> you know? So you, you, we had people over all the time and they're, they're telling stories about, Skinnerd and this band and that band and now it's all music all over again but a whole other style and you know well the funny thing with that was that was molly hatchet but the the brand name molly hatchet was touring with no original members so if you wanted right. to go see molly hatchet you had to go see gator country gator country. right you know and yeah the and they played uh, I got one last question about the whole UFO okay. thing. So, okay, yeah. 93, they were UFO, well, UFO disbanded in, you know, 83, 84, whenever that was. But then in 93, they started, um, you know, getting the band back together. And uh, Paul was supposed to be included, but at the last minute, they got Michael Schenker back. You know anything about that? Um, no, actually, I don't. The last thing... Let's see, three years. So back in like 2017, um, my dad and Pete had thought about getting wasted back together. And they were going to be doing a whole wasted reunion. They Well, he had all of these plans. And I don't know. I, I mean, I know that in the 90s, like you said, it was you said it was 93. 93 ish. Yeah. It goes um, yeah, no, actually they came they came to Florida too, I believe. Something UFO did a tour where they did like two shows in Florida and and he he didn't go. And I'm not sure why. Um and but he was still on great terms with everybody. I just don't know if it was an ego thing, you know, with with men, I guess, and rock stars, no offense. I don't know how that was. I'm only could have been and I'm not a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean I don't I don't really know. You know, I got to meet I, I mean obviously Pete Pete was such a mess. <laughs> um uh and Phil, I got to meet them. Uh Phil came down for I think it was a week. Um and uh my dad got to take him to go see like a shuttle launch. Um, up at the uh, Space Center. So that was cool when Phil was here. Um, and I got to meet Phil. And I remember when I was younger, my dad used to wear Speedos because that's a very British thing. But as we started very to get British. older, we were like, yeah, we were like, dad, you can't wear that to the beach here. Like people don't wear those here, no. you know? So um, he stopped. Not even up at uh, Playa Linda. They don't wear them even up there. <laughs> you know. They don't wear anything up there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so he... Phil was here and I just remember being mortified that he was on the beach with us because he was in a speedo and I'm like I can't believe I'm here with this guy like dad doesn't wear him anymore and he's a freaking rock star and I'm embarrassed because of what he's wearing you know that was just I don't know who the hell you are but you need to cover up because I don't want to see that that's how I was as a kid I was so embarrassed he had my dad he had these ugly speedos that were like 
That ex- the union. <laughs> that explains those old Iron Maiden studio oh. photos from the, the Bahamas. Oh. oh. When they had uh, that's, uh, in, compass point in the Bahamas. Yeah, and it's like, guys, guys, but it's a it must be a, a British UK Wales thing. Mm-hmm. Very, very English. Dijon, yeah. you know Dijon, you know how he is. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what about can you share any memories of spending Christmas with Uncle Bond Scott or anything? <laughs> uh no, Bond Bond died before I was born, I believe. When did he die? Yeah, yeah, uh, 70 uh 80, February 19th. Yeah. Um, there was, so, I keep um, like young, there was, there was a week where, um, Finn from wasted, the singer wasted was here. Pete was here and, or no, not Pete. It was Mike Gibbons from bad finger. He was a drummer, bad finger, but he lived in Orlando and they spent a week at the house. No, it was Pete. It was, it, they call it the, we called it the lost week because I never once could understand anything that they said the whole time. Um, my dad was very big into like medieval stuff. So one night they just were stumbling around hammer drunk and decided to knight people in the house with these huge swords. And I'm like, hi, 15 year old daughter here. Let's not play with sharp objects while drinking, please. <laughs> Let's not do that. But you it's know, like, nobody like listens axe to me in the bars nowadays. Let's get drunk and <laughs> throwing some axes around, you know? So nobody it. listens to me and Pete gets down on one knee and my dad's got this sword and he's, you know, trying to knight him and he's, and my friends are there and you know, they're laughing because there's just a bunch of old British drunk guys that you can't understand a word they're saying playing with swords. So my friend gets on her knee and Pete's like, I'm going to knight you. And I'm like, can you imagine that phone call as a parent? Like, sorry, we sliced your daughter's ear off because, you know, we let a drunk rock star just put a knife to her face. But he was, um, he fell a bunch. Pete was a stumbler, but he came, he fell through my bedroom door while we were sleeping. And, uh, was looking for something to help keep him awake. <laughs> he was like, "Do you guys have any?" And we were like, "Get out!" Of the no, we're like, I'm sorry. Jesus, we're kids. Yeah, you know. And then well, I heard my dad yelling at him for coming in the room while we were <laughs> sleeping. And then here comes another, you know, drunk rock star tumbling in. Do you know where the pop tarts are? And I'm like, "We don't know where the pop tarts are. <laughs> we just want to go to bed." Yeah, rock stars are not, you know, it's like dad and his uh, drunken buddies. It's, uh, all right. Yeah, that was a wild That's weekend. <laughs> rock and roll, rock and roll, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to talk about the uh, the elephant in the room here. Um, you know Ed, Eddie Trunk. You talked to Eddie Trunk quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. He was a great advocate for, uh, you know, getting Rush and amongst other people and other things too, but uh, promoting and, and trying to get Rush into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Why the fuck is UFO not in the Hall of Fame? Uh, just the performers that have been in this band, the musicians, then the tunes, and uh, I don't know. know. And look at Dolly crazy. Parton again, and nothing against Dolly. She's got some metal album coming out with some people, <laughs> um, but it's not rock and roll. It's country yeah. music. Um, again, you know, Iron Maiden's getting the shaft again, um, but. Again, another band who has uh, put the time in, they they're, have the time in to be able to be uh, qualified to get into the Hall of Fame. Um, I just, what do you, what's your take on them not being in the Hall of Fame? Um, I think nowadays people just don't appreciate. The, the, it's hard for me to say that because I don't want to sound like, but, but I mean, a lot of people don't even like know who they are. So they go, I feel like they go based more on the fame, you know, it's, it's, I think it's bullshit. (laughs) I think it's bullshit, honestly, because they, they have had 50 years, 50 years they toured. And regardless of who was in, who was out, that's a long freaking time to to keep going didn't they just do a 50 year anniversary i believe they did they still have two original members phil mogg and andy parker in the band it's not like they're and, an entity and neil carter was there, there too right wasn't neil carter on tour with them as well i believe he was there i don't know but i i just i 
I love Dolly, but that's not rock and roll. <laughs> Part of it is um, one because it's an American museum, the rock and right. roll fame, and two, they weren't as popular in the states back in their heyday. They mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but you know they were just a very heavily cult kind of band, even though they got right. cred and all that. And the third thing is, it's a long time. And the farther away it is, the less of the glow of the star. Right. So it's it's an uphill battle. <clears throat> Bands like Iron Maiden, UFO. I mean, Christ, Deep Purple and Rush. It was a struggle to get in there where that's no brainers. But then, you know, um, then you get bands like Guns N' Roses, who it's a first first year eligibility entry off the, essentially one album. You know, that's yeah. another story. There's really, that's, it's not a uh, a catalog, a Hall of Fame career catalog. Right. Well, and you know what? That's another thing in going back into the music community reaching out. He didn't personally reach out to me, but Slash did a tribute to my dad when he found out that he passed on his social media. And I was like, yeah, wow, that was <laughs> what Slash? What? You know, like you don't, and, and, and that, it, yeah, it yeah. The, hall, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is, it, it's, and, and what's even, you know, you do get those, some people, like, I'll wear a UFO shirt out and I'll, I'll wear it to concerts where I know some people will know who they are. You know, um, I went to Rockville in um, Daytona and this guy just came running up to me and he's like, how do you know who they are? And I was like, well, that's my dad right here. And he's like, no way. So he went and got his buddy and like, you know, we saw your dad in St. Paul, Minnesota in 19, blah, 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 blah. It was the best show of my life, you know, and it's, it's, it, and I wore the shirt for 12 hours and met three people, you know, who recognized who they were. So you kind of, when you get people that know the music and it's it's sad to say that it's it's starting to i mean in my opinion people just the new age of music people don't listen to older rock anymore like they, old metal they they do britney they they, they do <laughs> yeah, they, they do what i okay. have more of a problem on and maybe this gentleman that approached you and no disrespect it's like how does this young girl does she have the cred to have a UFO shirt or is it just an accessory? And, right. you know, I've had this, I have kids in, uh, I, I have, I, I have sons that are in their mid, mid and late twenties. And we have this discussion. I go, no, you, you can't wear a UFO shirt as an accessory because <laughs> you can't wear, you know, we have a problem with it as metalheads, our community, we're very territorial. Right. I don't yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that that cat that came up to you was uh, you know, calling you out and you had the ultimate, you know, what do you have to do? Show oh, it, it's ID. Right. <laughs> I, I well, I have Tonka tattooed on my arm here too. So I was just like, Yeah, my, you know, that's my dad. And he was like, No way. And so he brought his buddy over and his buddy's like, you know, it's a festival that you can camp at. And he's like, We were setting up camp this morning and we were jamming UFO. You know, I have I work in a dental office. I have dental patients. I'll play, you know, music and we'll talk about music. My favorite question to ask people is what was your first concert? How old were you? And who did you go with? And the stories that people come up, like, I love hearing about it. And one guy was like, Oh, I saw a UFO and cheap trick, you know? And I saw, you know, I've met like three people that have come into my office that are huge UFO fans. One guy came in and he was all excited in his new UFO shirt. And it was Michael. <laughs> Oh, wow. He's like, look at my shirt. And he's, I was like, oh, that's Michael. And he's like, oh, I didn't realize it. And I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> like, it's all right. But well, <laughs> well, you didn't ask me who my first concert was. <laughs> I didn't. I'm sorry. I was nervous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who was it? <laughs> uh, Ted Nugent with Humble oh. Eye Opening, 1980. Oh. And how old were you? I was uh, 13. Nice. And who'd you go with? I went with uh, one of my buddies and my older brother, who uh, my father, my late father, wouldn't let me go to shows until I was 13. Oh, so yeah. I, 
I had, an, I had an older brother, four years younger, and he would be going out to see Van Halen and Bad Company and Rush and all the. Oh. And there I am, like the dog that can't go out and play with the other dog. <laughs> in the right. uh, Stay on the porch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we saw Wasted. Um, with Iron Maiden. With Iron Maiden. Um, you did? Yeah. Uh, Peace yep. of Mind Tour. Yep. They opened up for yeah. Maiden. Yeah. Rochester. Rochester. Yeah. And, and I actually just other found my wasted shirt. Tour. Can I grab that really quick? Yeah, go ahead. All right. But I found this shirt. I found this shirt on eBay because he used to wear this. All right. You said it was where? This was the Save Your Prayers tour. Well, yeah. No. It doesn't say. <laughs> um. What, what, where it was, was it? Rochester, New York. No, it's not on here. When it Never mind, I'm sorry. Memorial Day, was that Memorial Day Madness? The Peace of March. Mind? March. Labor Day. Labor Day. Yeah, this one was in March. World but Peace. There's, yeah, I don't know what this tour, Save Your Prayers, maybe it was just the album, I'm not sure. But uh, it's awesome you got to see Wasted. I feel like, I feel like Wasted was really more him. I feel like Wasted was more he, he, I feel, I don't know. I heard a lot more Wasted growing up than I did UFO, if that says anything. Good band. <laughs> you know, here's a, yeah. fun, here's a fun fact. And um, I did an interview with this uh, uh, MTV producer, Brian Diamonds. And he told me the story that it was a trivia question that UFO replaced Ozzy in the Florida show when Randy Rhodes died. Yeah. So I heard the story about that. Um, my dad was actually supposed to take him to the dentist because he had a toothache. Apparently the story was um, they were in, I believe Lake Lakeland, Lakeland, Lakeland. Yep. And um, so my dad wasn't with them there, but they had, he was with him two days before and Randy had started to get a toothache. And my dad said, when we get to Florida, I'll go with you to the dentist. And then um, my mom picked my dad up from Melbourne airport and had told him because she had heard on the radio that Randy had passed away. And she told my dad and it, it ruined him for a bit. And they went out to eat to like, you know, she picked him up at the airport. They went to a restaurant and she said that people were trying to talk to him and, oh my gosh, you know, you're here for the concert. And he didn't want to talk to anybody because obviously the, the news of that was, but he, he, he spoke very highly of Randy of, of being just a very sweet kid. Basically he was a kid, but um, yeah, that was when people started to pass away when we got older, like when Lemmy died mm -hmm. and I, I saw my dad grieve that, you know, um, still didn't click about that. They were, you know, but it started to like, when people started just passing away and, and I talked to him and he would just be so bummed about it, you know, hearing about his friends dying. And right. I guess that's where you can take into his rock and roll community, but his friends reaching out to me from him that, you know, so I guess that's the, but um, yeah, well, that was awesome. Vern Amatic, we're 55 now. Vern's probably 56. I think, you know, the more every day it's something, someone or something happening. Who was it that I got a message this morning? Um, Bernie. Um, uh, uh, Bernie. Uh, uh, um, Marsden. Marsden. Yeah. Mar Marsden from Whitesnake. But he played in UFO. It was first gig was in UFO. Yeah. I had no idea. 1972, I guess, was his first it's gig an, in UFO. It's an unfortunate fact of life. and uh, it, just... it really is. And that's like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, and when I say like the world grieved with me, I get letter letters. I get messages from fans weekly. I get pictures from people that grew up with him, you know, oh, here's a picture of your dad and I when we were 16 years old outside of this. And they have a whole story to go with it, you know, and I'm like, tell me more. Tell me more. Because I can't ask him now. You know, I can't call him up and be like, is this lady crazy or ooh, excuse me, is this lady crazy or is, is, 
you know, tell me, I want to hear your side now. I don't, I don't have that. So I'm very grateful for the people that have been so kind to share. I mean, people send me videos and pictures of their guitar lessons that they had with him. You know, when he had his shop downtown, I used to pass there on my way home from work every day. Was that the Guitar Haven that he was at down there? One of them. Yep. He had two. The the Guitar Haven was towards like the the later times. Um, Yeah. So he. Where was the other studio down there? It was off Strawbridge, right where the, the Kava Bar is right there on the corner. Yeah. There, there's it's like a wine built a wine place now but it used to be called total guitars and he okay. ran that there i used to run around downtown all the time as a kid because i'd go to work with him during the summer and just run I around <laughs> i would have taken guitar lessons from him instead i was taking guitar lessons from some jamuk working at marion music over there uh, and stack, you know, and it was like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I want to rock. And this guy's like, I'm going to teach you this. And I'm like, well, who's paying for this stuff? You know, I want to learn some yeah. metal chords. Give me some sick. Yeah. Metal. And he's got me doing 12 bar blues, you know? So yeah. I, I would have, that would have been cool. To have some. Yeah. Lessons. A lot of people oh, that, that have, you know, so his students, he, and when he would have parties at the house, he would invite his students over to, to have dinner and, and I, we've had, you know, surgeons, doctors, nurses, um, producers, you know, people that took lessons from him that did all aspects of different careers, you know, and they would come over and just, it was a show. He put on a show at home. <laughs> like you could sell tickets to go hang out at Paul's house on the weekend. Cause it was always, but he, it was just he always had the eclectic, you know, and his students reaching out to me about things. Actually, um, two of his guitar students now teach hmm. guitar and other things, but they teach too. And so that's kind of cool to see them. My nephew was taking guitar lessons from one of them after my dad had passed. And um, so it's just been it's a small town too. He was here for a while. Hey, Brittany, seeing that your dad died in June of 2020 and Eddie Van Mm -hmm. Halen passed away in October of 2020, did uh, your father ever share with you ever meeting Eddie, any relations with Eddie? I know one's Um, in in Van Halen wasn't too popular over in Europe and it's a different generation, but because of the significance of Eddie Van Halen, you, you ever share anything? Nothing. Not really. Not that I can remember. Um, there was just a lot of, there was always stories. So sometimes, you know, it, I should have benefited more as to listening and paying attention to what he was saying about people. Um, but there probably is. I just, I'm not aware. Um, he just, he, yeah. I mean, there was a time where he went to, uh, he, he, he loved Pantera. He was a Pantera fan. He was a Dimebag fan. You know, so it was like, it, it, it kind of, oh, you know, him being a fan of somebody's guitar playing was like, okay, that guy's got to be like super, super good if he likes him, you know, type thing. He was a, he was a big Dimebag fan. Um, I remember that as well. Um, but I don't, I don't remember any Van Halen stories. He did actually, I know we're going to speed this up, but his last tour he did, he joined a Swedish band called Killer B. Mm-hmm. Um, and they did a tour with um, L.A. Guns and the Bullet Boys. Wow. Yeah. And that was in I, I believe it was 2015. And that was the taste that like I got a taste of my dad being on tour at the time. And I'm an adult now. Yeah. So now I'm I'm calling the bus driver. I'm like, is he staying hydrated? <laughs> is everybody eating? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, do, do we need to do anything? Can I send a package somewhere? And they're like, no, he's fine. You know, and I'd call him and I'm like, Dad, you look like you could eat a sandwich. And he's like, you know, leave me alone. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> I'm like, okay, just making sure you're taking care of yourself. And we actually got to see them play in um, it was in Georgia, and I got to meet. Tracy for the first time I got to meet um Phil Lewis. To meet, uh, Phil Lewis I got to meet all of them um I got and that was that was really cool too I worked their their merch booth <laughs> it was like, awesome. put me to work Both boys Mark and uh yeah Mark um Torin yeah. yeah yeah nice guy 
Yeah, that was a fun, that was fun because I never got to see my dad in that aspect of, and there was a lot of UFO fans at that show. There's so a lot of UFO fans everywhere. It's uh, I know, it, but I, I, I saw him play with Gator country and there were no UFO, fans, yeah. you know, and then you, you go to something more his speed. And it was, it was really cool because a lot of the fans there were there to see him and killer B was awesome. He loved working with them and touring with them. So that was, that was fun to see while, you know, I got to, but I'm glad it was a brief, I don't know how long he could survive on tour again, being in that age. I don't even know how old he was at the time, but I just, I would FaceTime him and I'm like, are you eating? Are you drinking water? And he's like, stop. <laughs> so did you get the sandwiches I packed, dad? <laughs> right? like, let me take care of you. <laughs> I'm going to let John finish this up, but before I go, I just okay. want to ask you, uh, do you have any uh, websites or media, social media handles to share. I know that you, you mentioned the other night during our conversation, there's a something online, a something you put together, a remembrance. Oh, of some sort. yeah, I did. His celebration of life is on YouTube. Um, but they have, he has a guy that, um, named Steve that runs his fan page on Facebook called Paul Tonka Chapman fan page. Um, so they, he's constantly uploading pictures and videos and stories and all sorts of stuff like that. So that's, you know, the, the celebration of life is really cool. Cause you can watch the testimonials from the different, you know, musicians and people that were super important in his life that reached out and said some beautiful words to tribute to him. And, and listeners, if you're out there listening to this and you happen to have an old photo of yourself with Paul or something, send it along to Brittany on Facebook or send it here to metal mayhem ROC and we'll send it along to her. That's that stuff you, you can't put a price on. And that's the common thread that's uh, we're celebrating tonight. How, um, you know, the love of your dad and just the, the outreach from the metal community. So Brittany, thank you for uh, spending time with us. Thank tonight. you. And um, I'll let John say goodbye and we'll definitely stay in touch. Absolutely. Thank you yes, so thank much you, Brittany, for joining us tonight. Um, I hope our listeners, um, we were able to convey uh, just how you felt about your father um, and, and try to give you the two points of view, the, uh, the sibling family view and the rock and roll view and uh, let you guys, you know, like, you know, where the rockers are coming from and things like that. So it was great running into you at Quiet Riot. Get your tickets for the Iron Maidens in November. We'll, uh, I'll be on a cruise. I'm so sad. I'm right. so sad. The rock and roll cruise you're going on? Yeah, it better be the metal cruise. I yeah. wish. <laughs> well, thank you, Brittany. Um, thank you thank very you. much. It was wonderful to see you. I'm glad we were able to get together and, and talk about um, your father, Paul. Um, dearly missed. Great rock and roll guitar legend. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Good night. Metal for Life. Thank you for listening to Metal Mayhem ROC. Check out our website at MetalMayhemROC.com for information on podcasts, archives, links to all our live radio shows, and all sorts of info. Please like, follow, and share with everyone, even your non-metal friends. And always remember to keep it heavy. But good night.